we are back vlog number 42 or number 13 a new series and uh, I just come back I just came back from a break last week I was talking about that I might take extra rest day and I've just done that so uh, this week instead of resting three days I'm resting four and might be possible that next week I'm gonna do exactly the same and then I do believe then if this carries on then I will take a full week off uh, after that just because my recovery is uh, nobody when I, when I want it to be and uh, I'm already at I do believe five and a half six thousand calories uh, long story short I do not want to eat more just for the time constraints bloody it takes to eat and uh, I don't want to get any bigger like I genuinely don't want to get any heavier than I am now because it's a ball leg. I would rather keep at my body weight and get leaner than uh, force feed myself and try to get bigger. Well, the thing is I'm, I don't have to force feed myself if I take my strengths uh, recovery seriously. So if I drink enough water, if I sleep enough, if I take enough rest days, I my appetite is always high. So if one of those are out of the window, so if I don't start my day with a massive jug of water, I won't be able to eat as much food throughout the day as I usually would, because it just impairs my appetite. It, imp it impairs my body's ability to absorb food and everything else goes down the drain. And by the end of the day, I kind of start thinking maybe I just need to cram in some calories for the sake of calories. That's so you start eating bloody cookies and all the junk that you shouldn't be eating, which just makes you lethargic as fuck and uh, doesn't serve any purpose apart from giving you that emotional boost, which, let's be honest, it, it gives you a mental association with some kind of pleasure. But in the long run, I have gone through that circle so many times that it just puts me off because I know next day, two or three, if I carry on like this, my body is just getting weaker and weaker and I stop recovering completely and everything else is uh, being affected as well as much as my appetite. So getting calories in for the sake of calories is stupid, stop doing it. So uh, break definitely did me good, two days not doing anything or thinking about anything related to work. It's great and uh, just can't wait to get stuck back into everything else I do we, otherwise it just kind of gets a bit repetitive so uh, went away for a night uh, had a is it Taiwanese something like that uh, food food was amazing had a glass or or three of uh, red wine uh, just alongside of it get some antioxidants in me and uh, other than that it's just great to have a few days of not thinking about just what else I need to do. Uh, let's be honest, we shouldn't ever think about what we need to do. We should be focusing on what we like to do and uh, what actually improves quality of your life rather than I need to do this, I need to do that. And then you get overwhelmed that by the end of all your to-do list, you haven't done what actually mattered. and it's just never ending circle of stress anxiety and god knows what else so long story short i feel great i feel refreshed tomorrow hitting gym back into gym on uh, doing some uh, substrate focused work tomorrow just uh, focusing on trying to deplete my atp reserves to the point where i kind of uh, don't have any any energy at the end so training sessions are tough but nothing to cause any damage on a tissue uh, there is massive difference between going to gym to uh, go all out and have no reps in reserve and all that kind of bullshit but there's only so much you can train if you are not fit which I class so your strength endurance is not there to kind of support the style of training you want to do you're gonna gas out very quick and no matter how strong you are your strength is gonna fall if you are one of those guys who does one set at very high weight then rest for like half a minute, minute two, whatever the hell you want. And the next set is drastically lower weights than previous set. You need to reconsider how actually geared for those training sessions your body is. So I specifically work like work out like that. I'm one of those uh, 
weird guys who have never bought into bloody card drinks and whatnot through training sessions because first of all i'm not that big yeah i'm 120 kilos but who cares uh by doing this for years and years and years and years this is why my body can tolerate a hell of a lot of carbs so i can eat over a thousand grams of carbs a day and i'll still look exactly the same but at the same time i can train for sometimes two three hours non-stop without feeling like dizzy lightheaded lethargic and god knows what else uh, most of the people might experience if they were to put in my place so uh, don't do that if you need your carbs through the training yeah go for it if you're someone who is uh, kind of not used to that kind of style of training go for it if your appetite is absolute garbage by all means a lot of guys i train who are about 120 kilos um well, most of the guys i train are 130 140 some are 200 kilos big uh, so they will have car drinks just for the sake of the amount of work they do and amount of tissue they carry the more tissue you have the more expensive it, it becomes not expensive in just monetary value but expensive in energy values that you need to walk around so yes i am uh fairly above normal weight but that weight is also extremely energy demanding so to carry my body around my body needs hell of a lot of energy just to exist never mind building something never mind getting stronger never mind growing muscle and getting leaner at the same time and, and all those kind of things just to exist i need more food than anyone else at my body weight and and that's just that it's like if you have little 1.2 diesel bloody cars that needs to travel 100 miles you will spell hell of a lot less diesels than driving a heavy truck which i don't know you you pick one whichever you want little one three and a half tons or full-blown lorry up to 18 tons the amount of energy that you will require to spend same amount of distance that to cover same amount of distance and with smaller car will be humongously different. This is what people don't realize, that when they come to trying to get bigger, leaner, stronger, that your life has to change, your habits have to change for that bigger, leaner, stronger individual. You can't do the same exact thing, no matter how hard you train, how well your training sessions are laid out, you're not gonna grow if you don't feed yourself for growth, simple as. You can get stronger without feeding yourself, that's that's a given, that's a completely different adaptation for your body. But you can't get bigger without pains at all of being big. So uh, we're gonna bounce back and forward with some questions first, and then I'm gonna just touch up on what the hell I'm doing with myself. I kind of covered most of it anyway, but so first question is uh, what to eat to improve performance? Well, first of all, you need to be clear what kind of performance do you want to improve? Uh, well, I can't class bodybuilding as performance. It's not performance based. It's yeah, it's just a visual. Uh, so, uh, but let's let's say for argument sake, uh, if you were to eat for performance first of all you need to understand what kind of body weight you need to be in so and then obviously food quality hydration all those good everything is fairly fairly similar but where individual role comes into play is uh, what can you actually tolerate how much water can you drink without bloody peeing yourself how much protein you can digest without suppressing your appetite how much carbs can you take in without feeling lethargic as hell you know all those things come in play is that more restricted you have to be with your body weight the harder it kind of gets so if you are weight class competitor then uh, for for that perform like for to me maintain that body weight you you always need to kind of play around in certain amount of calorie intake but for me personally performance is doing something better than you have done before and that has nothing, that has very little to do with food. So uh, it has everything to do with your training, with your recovery. And that's probably where food comes into play. But to focus on a food as primary goal to improve your performance is foolish. And you're leaving a hell of a lot of stuff on a table by not addressing the most important things, which is training efficiently 
and recovering sufficiently for your next training session. Recovery does not always mean eating. It's uh, stress management, it's sleep, it's your ability to uh, do cardiovascular work and so on and so forth. And then comes food. Then comes picking right nutrients for the job at hand. So if you have damaged, like I do, uh, substrate focused work, then you need a hell of a lot of carbs. If you have uh, done more of a skill-based work, then you need a hell of a lot of antioxidants and so on and so forth. So what I mean by that is that sometimes you will need carbs, sometimes you will need uh, high nutrient-rich foods like your fruit, veg, all those kind of things. Uh, but you just literally need to sit down, write on paper, I did this kind of training session, it was taxing this kind of uh, adaptation. To recover from that, I need this. And more often than not, people are just not drinking enough. I, I, I think I've been hammering this every single day, God knows how long now. Drink more. You know, when I say that, people go like, yeah, but I drink a lot already. I can guarantee you probably don't. And uh, stop lying to yourself. Uh, if you are one of those very rare individuals who do hydrate enough, yeah, it's great. And truth be told, you can drop with a heart attack if you drink too much when you pee out all your electrolytes. But more often than not, people just don't drink anywhere near enough. They need to maintain their performance, improve their performance, and recover well. So to eat for performance, understand what you're actually trying to improve. Is it skill? Is it physique? Uh, is it a different style of training that, that you're trying to improve? Uh, and so on and so forth. And only then you can decide what you actually need. There is no one size fits all. And uh, the more advanced you are, the probably more precise you need to become with all these things where, where you're just working out. My main concern would be is your gut actually healthy to digest food? Because most of the time people eat so much garbage uh, food choices that they don't realize that they have chronic inflammation all over the place and their knees aching, elbows aching, all those kind of things. To, to me, if someone comes to me and complains about like arthritis and whatnot, first thing what I will look at is what kind of food choices do you make? Now, obviously training will make a massive impact but infl inflammatory response is uh, over expression of inflammatory kind of byproducts on, on your joints, which, which means overuse and underutilizing recovery protocols, which is food training, uh, food recovery, walking, uh, all those kind of things. But uh, and understand what you're trying to improve and understand that if you are starting to ache, it's more often than not useful to pull back and reassess how efficient is your training style, how efficient is your nutritional strategy to recover from specific training you do. So uh, how do I know enough? Uh, how do I know when I train enough or too little? Pfft, notes. <laughs> No taking. Basically, this is why I ask everyone I work with to give me a thorough feedback by the end of the week, how they felt, uh, resting hard, HRV, blood pressure, uh, a lot of kind of more of a subjective uh, opinion about their appetite and give me some kind of feedback about their week. I always ask about something good that's happened in their week. If they can't find one reason why their week has been good, uh, there are very kind, how can I even describe? Things to look at are more serious than just bloody nutrition and training. If you are mentally so blinded that you can't see a single good thing in your week, you, you seriously need to work on yourself. And uh, if you are in this, that kind of mindset, no training style, no nutrition, no bloody drugs will ever help you. So that needs to be addressed. And uh, I would rather you, so to speak, undertrain than overtrain. At least you can recover from session to session and you know when to push harder. Instead of getting a new training plan and then going all out on every single exercise, completely ruining your body, and then being proud about how sore you are all week. That's not how fucking it works. I was one of those idiots. I have probably wasted 15 years training like an asshole. And not realizing that... Uh, 
yeah, as great and as awesome as it sounds, that bravado, stupid style of training, you can improve way quicker by being smarter, by making smarter choices, by actually evaluating what you do, reassessing how hard you have trained. Never forget that training is just one part of your whole life. It was, It is supposed to make you better. If your training impairs your ability to do anything else because you're sore and you need to sit at home on your ass and you've got a headache and instead of going to work, you'd rather have a nap, uh, yeah, you need to reassess values of your life. <laughs> because let's be honest, we all train because it makes us feel good, we can, we can look great, we can eat more food, and why not? But there's always a, a small line that shouldn't be crossed too often, which is pushing too hard too often to the point where you get weaker and a lot of people who do get weaker they start reaching out for absolutely wrong uh, things to fix this instead of resting more sleeping more and cleaning up their diet they start looking for drugs that's not how it works literally you it should be other way around you should be cleaning up your sleep you should be cleaning up your training plans and uh, making sure everything is specifically designed for you then eating extremely well and only then when you have milked everything out add some supplements and you will need nowhere near as much as you think you need and results will be flipping amazing and people will be looking at you and staring at you how the hell did you achieve that by saying what you do and they will be blaming you online to them which happens a lot with people who do everything properly that they are blamed that they're just full of shit when they're actually just honest so, uh, how do you go about figuring out someone's calorie needs? Well, this is, uh, I'm going against all the books because I don't work with anyone who would fit into that middle of Bell's curve when they do all these studies. Because let's be honest, I have done research studies, I had to do it when I did my master's degree and I know how flawed all of those bullshit is. And not, not, very, not very often anyone will work with people that I'm willing to work, who are complete outliers. So to figure out someone's calorie needs, I will usually ask their weekly feedback. I need to know what they do, how, how they react. And most of all, I need to chat with them face to face, which happens mostly online, just to figure out what kind of personalities they are. Uh, and it's, it's, it's fairly easy to understand if a person is going to be honest, if they're going to lie to you, and so on and so forth. And uh, this is easy for me to kind of establish if I'm going to work with them or not. But when it comes to actually setting some numbers up, uh, things go as to just understanding what they are on now. Then readjusting everything, cleaning things up, and, and off we go from there. People don't realize that most of the time, the better you start to eat, the more energy you start to expend. And oftentimes I have had guys that uh, eat at some certain amount of uh, calorie intake and I bump their calories massively. And they like, I'm starting to lose weight. How is this happening? Well, for very simple reasons. You probably move much more now. Your training quality has gone up massively. And uh, you most likely sleep better as well because inflammatory markers have gone down because you are finally feeding those, uh, you're feeding your, your body with antioxidants that are needed to fight off inflammation. So you sleep better and recover better and train harder and just be more, more around, uh, more observant, probably like right term. I'm trying to say that you are just uh, acknowledging what you do more rather than just go to gym, sit on your ass uh, at a job, then straight after the gym, go home, sit on your ass on a sofa, and then you're surprised why nothing is happening. But in reality, everything you do throughout the day will massively help you or massively dampen your ability to progress. So, uh, the sooner you start making notes on what you do, how you do, and how you respond, the quicker you're going to get results. And uh, you just need to understand if making these adjustments and tracking everything is is worth doing for you. You don't need to. But if you want to be great at anything you do, you need to know exactly where you're going and you need to know exactly where you're starting from. Because if you need to get to 
I don't know, on top of the building and you don't know which floor you're starting from, you'll never know how long it's going to take for you and if you're not going to get frustrated, are there any lifts or stairs in the middle or, and so on and so forth. Just knowing the outcome in your head that I want to be there and I want to do this helps very little if you don't know where you're starting and only after you know where you want to go to and what's your actual starting point, you start developing plan and kind of uh, uh, setting everything from the outcome to your starting point, chuck it down in blocks, periodize everything and uh, get there stress-free. Last but not least, uh, talk about experience with Milos. Milos is a great guy and uh, I would never do what the hell he asks me to do uh, unless I would be 100% convinced that I want to be a pro bodybuilder. Uh, truth be told, things he asks you to do is almost physically impossible to do if you have life. But they work. So... Uh, the cocktail of supplements and, and all those kind of things is uh, is interesting to say the least uh, at the same time i have seen 10 times uh, crazier things uh, than what milos asks you to do uh, but more importantly it's food food amount is ridiculous food frequency is ridiculous training intensity is insane uh, no wonder guys who swap over to him gain 10, 15, 20 pounds within weeks, literally. But unless you maintain that kind of high intensity food intake, training volume, frequency, and uh, I can't even say drug amount is high. It, it isn't. Uh, but it's literally what it takes to be a pro. So if you want to be a pro, go to Milos, he'll flip and sort you out. But forget about anything else you want to do. Like literally, you won't even be able to breathe and bloody have a dump without having to time it. Uh, but it is what it is, it, it's what it takes and fen results are phenomenal. No wonder a lot of guys who are already a pro level go to him because they want to just push up that next level. And thing is, every time you break through those barriers, it's easier to maintain it. Uh, once you go, once you get there a couple times, uh, same like with me, I'm fairly oversized at the moment, but I don't really feel much of an effort to, to be at this body weight now. Whereas before, when I first get got to this body weight, it was such a struggle. It was insane. I was drinking gainers every meal and and so on and so forth whereas now i can just literally relax uh have four meals a day uh yeah a couple of them are 2000 kilo calories per meal oh, some days i have just uh four meals a day three meals a day and a shake so my breakfast will be 2000 calories my post-workout meal will be just protein shake then my next meal will be over 3000 calories and my last meal is, is usually lower in calories around 700 calories so uh, but most of the time i eat five meals a day sorry four meals equally spread out and last meal is usually lower in calories just to make sure i'm hungry in the morning so uh at the moment my body weight is i don't know i haven't weighed myself this week because i I don't really weigh myself to begin with, but I can't expect it to be any higher or lower than previous weeks. So it depends. It's probably around 116 to 118 kilos on empty stomach. By the time I eat my food, it's over 120 kilos. So I train at 120, 121 kilo body weight. Uh, supplements have not changed because there's no need to. Everything else, everything is there. Uh, and yeah, my recovery is, is quite, eh, how can I even say it? It's not that it's non-existent, but it's very slow because my intensity has increased, uh, my volume of workouts have increased, and my focus is much better as well. So this means I do two sessions a week that are identical to every two sessions a week for the last six weeks. So, uh, and what I mean, my focus has improved. It's I expend far more calories in far less time 
in those training sessions that I did six weeks ago because I'm, I'm laser sharp. I know exactly what to do. I know exactly how to execute it. There is no messing about. There is no thinking about how do I do this movement? How do I do that movement? How, uh, how am I going to move transition from this side to that? How long do I need to rest in between? I'm not out of breath between exercises, between sets or anything like that. I'm just like a hammer, just going and everything is automated at this point. So yeah, uh, other stands, everything is great. And I'll report back next week how I feel about my recovery. From next week, I will improve, increase uh, a frequency of my recovery protocols, which will be massages and chiropractor at the same, same session. Uh, I usually did massage one week, chiropractor another week. Uh, so I'm gonna increase that to doing both at the same time now. And uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, being at my size is not fun. Whoever keeps saying that I just want to be big and strong and blah, blah, blah. Dude, you don't understand how uh, taxing it is, challenging it is. And if your goal is not to be professional, some kind of bodybuilder, uh, why would you be oversized, overweight? I, no need for it. I, like I said, I feel fairly comfortable as this body weight. So it's, it's not too harsh. And uh, at the same time, I don't want to get any bigger for another reason that I am on borderline of having to buy a bigger car. <laughs> and that's another expense. So my food bills are ridiculous as it is. Uh, the amount of work I need to do to maintain my physique, my performance, uh, mental clarity is ridiculous as it is. And to add another kind of uh, a liability on top of all that by buying bigger cars that will inevitably demand me to work harder just to make sure I pay expenses on cost of maintaining that car would be just unnecessary at this point. So when I finish this training block, which is mainly focused on making sure that I move well, I, I, I recover really quick from session to session, from set to set, from rep to rep, improve my strengths, build my legs back to where they used to be, at least partially. I know uh, the way I structurally feel now, I haven't had 300 kilos on my shoulders since 2013, I believe. So nearly 10 years. And uh, I don't expect to get back to that weight within just a couple of months. Maybe next year, I'm definitely not rushing into this. I definitely don't want to be one of those idiots who are like, yeah, I'm back on my strengths, blah, blah, blah. There's no need for it. I, un I understand if I try to load my body with that kind of resistance so quick, even though I do feel amazing at the moment, it's going to be just me asking for problems. And uh, that's the last thing I want, because my focus is, else longevity performance having fun with it all and looking great as long side of it uh, and i do know i can achieve that by just training hard making sure i show up when i need to do uh, my job and uh, eating well more often than not i don't i can't even say that my diet is perfect it's, it's not it's nowhere near it's nowhere near optimal my training sessions are optimal that's the most important things uh, another thing for me to be on top on is uh, my recovery uh, strategies and only then my food because eating requires time time is extremely valuable for me who wants to do a hell of a lot of other things apart from the just eating sleeping and training I'm not 17 anymore who could just go home with him and ask my mom to cook my meals. Uh, I can't do that. I wish I could, but nope, and it's not going to change. So uh, summarizing it all, feeling great. Definitely a couple days of refreshing myself by being away with my girlfriend was something that I really needed. And I'm ready to rock and roll into next week. So on that note, I'll leave you at this. And... Catch you next week.